But also, uh, my mother's your side yesterday, and that's for the killer. Shoshana Bhatkhana is on the program. But... Shoshana Bhatkhana, Leilu Nishmata. Do I have a green light to start? Uh, All right. So, uh, uh, just one question: Did you make Did you make me a call so I can yes. share? Yes. 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 Share sheets. Okay. Thank you so much. So I'll tell you what we're going to talk today about. Bezat Hashem. Uh, we we have met two weeks ago. Uh, in a different time, though, in the first slot, but we met and I uh, spoke about uh, pikuach nefesh on the national level. That was the, the topic. And of course, it was uh, directly related to our situation of uh, Corona. <clears throat> so along that line, initially, I thought to give, uh, because I wanted to give something that has to do with the things that we're Coping with now, I thought to give me a, a share about porch minyanim, whether they work or not, halachically. Uh, but then I regret it, and I'll tell you what we're talking about and why. I'm talking about the the topic of mila, bris, bris mila, at the time of Corona. That's the topic. Now the reason I picked up this topic is, uh, first of all, that has to do with the Parsha. Uh, Lech Lecha, uh, the end of Parsha Lech Lecha, that was last Shabbat. The end of Parsha Lech Lecha was about the bris. Avram, actually, as Rabbi Melamed points out in his, um, in his book, uh, Pnine Halacha, uh, Rabbi Melamed, Eliezer Ma, points out that it's the first mitzvah that a Jew was commanded as a private Jew. It is true that Avraham was told lech lecha, lecha, but he sees that as a more national statement. The Mila is mamash a mitzvah, and it was also coined as a mitzvah, um, that the first mitzvah that a Jew was commanded. So that gives it a special significance. And indeed, Jews were uh, really moister than nefesh. They were uh, the Jews, even though it's not one of the three Averis, Jews were really uh, um, uh, taking care to do this mitzvah, even under very, very hard circumstances. Okay? And this is also in the background of um, the question of Mila at the time of the corona. Uh, it's not that it tells automatically what is the answer. I'm just saying the background is that it's an extremely significant mitzvah and that uh, it's, the, it's, one of the two, it's one of the two positive commandments, one of the two positive commandments, the only two positive commandments, that if you miss them, there is a karis, it's Mila and Pesach. It's an extremely significant mitzvah and... Um, uh, it was, uh, and, and Jews throughout generations uh, were really doing a lot, a lot of efforts, heroic efforts <clears throat> to perform this mitzvah of Mila. So I said, I thought about it because it's at the end of the previous week's Parsha and actually the beginning of this week's Parsha is the Bikur Cholim that uh, Hashem does when Avram was recovering from the Mila. So it's mamish, so it's a perfect time to give such a shear in the week between uh, Thursday. Another uh, uh, reason uh, that I just thought about today is that you'll see that there is a big vikuach, a big dispute regarding one of the aspects of the Mila, whether it is uh, dangerous or not. And um, there is a big, yeah, there is a big dispute and uh, people are saying one thing and people are saying the opposite thing and Lahora, they're even arguing about facts, uh, which gave me the idea of post-truth, you know, uh, and everyone will think, uh, what's the link to yesterday and today regarding the question of truth and uh, fake news and post-truth and whatever uh, about our era. 
So that was another uh, association I got. Um, but let's now start the discussion. So I'll tell you how I got to the discussion initially. Um, about, you know, uh, pretty uh, early after the corona, you know, after we were all in a lockdown, you know, around Pesach time, I believe. Um, a, a, a very, a, a Talmud Chacham, a Talmud Chacham that lives in my neighborhood, uh, that uh, made Aliyah from America, he's even a rabbi, and his father is a very known doctor in New York, that is consult that is giving uh, that gave during that time also um, advice to you know uh, Rabbi Willig, Rabbi Schechter. I don't remember, but really, he's in 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 those circles. His father is himself a Talmud Chacham, and he's a doctor and a respected doctor. And he sent me he sent me um, uh, I think it was right after Pesach actually. He sent me um, a recorded WhatsApp. Uh, my neighbor, this 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 rabbi that his father is a doctor that lives in my neighborhood, that his father is strongly against doing mila. Uh, now, uh, is strongly against. He thinks it's too dangerous. You don't know uh, whether the moel is uh, has corona whether the father has corona uh, and therefore uh, he is very concerned about it. And therefore his father was talking with the rabbis that he, he thinks it's, it's, it's uh, not responsible to do Mila now. And when I checked it out, I saw that the rabbis, uh, first of all, you know, there was, it was a different time. We knew less about the corona, you know, and, and by the way, just an anecdote, Baruch Hashem, this, this own person that sent me that uh, recorded message, he had a baby several months later in the same. And there was a bris, and it was on time, and it was on Shabbos. Okay? What shows you that he himself, and of course it was after consultation with his father, meaning his father himself changed his mind, by the way, not necessarily changed his mind. Maybe the times changed and the situation changed and the control was better. Uh, he, his father spoke about the situation in New York a week about after Pesach. If you remember, it was a terrible situation uh, then in, in New York uh, a week after Pesach. Um, at any rate, when he spoke with me about it and, and brought it to my attention, I started looking it up and I saw that the, the chief rabbinate of Israel was very clear about, on the one hand, uh, giving um, very clear instructions and care, how to be careful about the Mila, uh, in, uh, how to be careful about the Mila, excuse me, I'll just turn it off, how to be careful about the Mila uh, on Corona times, but on the other hand, uh, claiming strongly, and it was supported by doctors, that there is no reason to postpone uh, bris mila uh, now. So that was the the. Now, if we'll think, what are what are the risks that could be involved in mila? So I already mentioned, you know, people are, uh, let's say, at least uh, three people are uh, in in a are not keeping social distance, okay? We'll say it this way. Um, uh, um, that's the father, the baby, and the, and the moel. Uh, <clears throat> I assume, let's say, that the father is the sandak. Let's say we wanna minimize the people around, okay? Let's say, <clears throat> so the people that will be in, 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 in uh, Distant, and without distance is the moel and, and the father, actually. The baby anyhow will not have distance, you know, because an hour after the bris or a week after the bris, the father will not keep social distance from the baby. Yeah, of course. So I'm talking about the moel and the father. So that's one uh, risk. Uh, what other 
What other risks could be involved? I'm asking you now, think about it in, in Mila at the time of Corona. Metsitsa. Right, so a main, a big, so I'll get to the Metsitsa in a second. And actually the majority of our class will relate to that because that seems to be the highest risk. But even before you just, you know, it's, it's definitely a procedure, okay? Even before the Metsitsa, it's a procedure. Um, the um, well, the hand uh, hand. places are exposed. It's a chirurgic uh, uh, procedure. And uh, let's say people are, are saying blessings, people are drinking wine, uh, meaning there are no masks and the distance is not a distance. So this could be a problem. And of course, what seems to be the highest risk, as was mentioned, is the practice of metzitza which is that part of the process of the Mila is that the Moel is sucking Metzitza, the, 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 the literal translation of Metzitza is to suck, is there is a practice of sucking the blood. And of course, if you do it with your mouth, uh, there, well, you know, the, the virus is going with the, uh, with uh, uh, rock, yeah, saliva, however you call it. So uh, that seems to be a very direct risk of if the Moel Chas V'Shalom has COVID, it will, uh, that, that's the best way to, to, to uh, make the baby with COVID and then the parent, and you know, you understand. And then the chain continues. So these are the, the issues at stake. Now, first, I'll start with a certain uh, very, very quick background, and then we will explore um, and really uh, what could be, what are the considerations here and what could be done. So let's start first, as I said, general about the Mila. I said some general statements, but uh, uh, let's read some others. I said it's, the, it's a very important mitzvah, has karis, Jewish identity, first mitzvah that a Jew was commanded as a private Jew. The Gemara in Shabbos, as you know, <clears throat> the 21st chapter in Masechet Shabbos is all dedicated for Bruce Mila, Perak Rabbi Eliezer de Mila, uh, Perak Afaf in Masechet Shabbat. And it says here the following, Kol mitzvah shekiblu alehem besimcha, the Gemara says, Kol mitzvah shekiblu alehem besimcha kegon mila, Every mitzvah that the people were of Israel were doing the serious nefesh uh, were willing to die in order to do it. When there was exera, of course, it's not very important to point out. Pikuach nefesh is the uchemila. We'll see it. Uh, it's not one of the three Averis. Yeah, Pikuach Nefesh is Dochemila. We can prove that easily. Have you ever been in a bris that was postponed from the eighth day? I assume all of you have. Well, at least my firstborn, uh, his Mila was not at the eighth day. He was uh, yellow. Uh, and uh, and uh, that is because Pikuach Nefesh does not override Mila. Only Avodah Zara, Gilu Yareos, and Shvichus Damim override uh, Pikuach Nefesh. But Mila is part of all the mitzvot that we spoke about two weeks ago. Two weeks ago, I gave you a shir about Pikuach Nefesh. We spoke about the national level, but the first uh, uh, layer was the private level. Uh, there is a an, an explicit verse in the Torah that says "Vachai bahim," and you should live via the mitzvot. And our sages infer "Vachai bahim velo sheyamut bahim," meaning that a mitzvah, as we uh, clarified uh, two weeks ago, that the Tosfos in Yoma says that "Vachai bahim" means that even a suffolk pikuach nefesh. The Gemara already says that, but he clarifies that we don't want any, any scenario that a mitzvah will cause a life risk. 
Yeah, it is, that's not the will of Hashem. And even a suffix pikuach nefesh uh, uh, overrides the mitzvah. Now, this is true regarding Mila too. And yet still, we see that Jews were moser than nefesh. Uh, let's say the goyim didn't uh, allow. The reason is the following. The halachic reason is the following, is that was gzeira samalchut. We know that in the laws in, of, 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 of Messias Nefesh, three, only three mitzvos, three, three negative commandments, only three negative commandments of Avodah Zara, Gilu Arayos, and Shfichus Damim. Only for these three, you override, uh, 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 you, you, you are giving your life, your, your, your uh, pikuach nefesh doesn't override them, but also every commandment, if there is, there are goyim that are, in principle, want to uproot the Jews from this mitzvah, and it's done out of an ideological thing that we want to uproot you from this mitzvah, okay, then you should be most of your nefesh on it. And that is why, here, well, after I gave this uh, short background, here. So again, I'm reading the, the, the text from the Gemar and Shabbos. Every mitzvah that they that the Jews uh, accepted upon themselves happily, like Mila, they were still doing it besimcha. And every mitzvah that they were moser their nefesh to die in order to perform it. And when did they do it? Of course, Bishat Zerat Malchut, when the Gentiles made a decree to uproot the Mila, so we were even willing to die and do it. So every myth, and since historically that was done regarding Mila, we know the Greeks, that was one of the three things that they decreed not to do, and the Jews were moser than nefesh, willing to die for it. So since that was done, it is still, they still hold on to it. So we see here, just I just gave it as a general statement to show uh, the, 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 the significance of this Mila, that Jews are not giving up this mitzvah so easily. In the Shulchan Aruch, there's a, a siman, a chapter in Yoridah that has only one seif, one statement, and that is the statement. Mitzvat ase la'av la'mulad no. It's a positive commandment for the father to circumcise, to, to make Mila to his son. And look, look at this statement. Look at what a statement. And this mitzvah is bigger than all the rest of positive commandments. Uh, you agree with me that there are a lot of important positive commandments in the Torah. Eating matzah. I don't know. There are a lot of important wearing it, fill in. A lot of important positive commandments in our Torah. And still the Shulchan Aruch says, Shulchan Aruch says, so since this is a mitzvah that is greater than any mitzvah to say, and since this mitzvah, Jews throughout history were, when the Gentiles wanted to uproot this mitzvah, they were willing to die in order to perform it. So clearly, uh, you know, it's not a mitzvah that we would give up easily. And yet still, if it's pikuach nefesh, and it's not a decree of the Gentiles, well, corona, you'll have to agree with me that corona is not a decree of the malchus. Corona is a, a situation. And furthermore, we have a precedence. We know, Chaveirim, you know what, I'll ask the, the crowd here, because I see I'm speaking too much, and then... Uh, I'm not sure whether people are with me or not. So here I'll, I'll be like a good teacher, which I'm not always, uh, and I'll just ask the crowd, what is the precedence of pushing, aside from what I said, like a public even precedence, of pushing away the mitzvah of Mila because of pikuach nefesh and doing it not only on the private level, we all of us know that there are many babies like my firstborn that the Mila was pushed off 
because of pikuach nefesh. Okay, <laughs> this is very, one second. This is a, one yeah. second. One second. One second. This is a very frequent thing. But I'm asking, when did we have something public that all the Jews, because of an objective sakana, uh, uh, pushed away the mila? Yes. Um, yeah. right. 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 What? Please. Mid Right. right, Mitch and Marcel, both of you are saying uh, 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 an explicit answer. It's an answer that appears in our sources, in the sages, that for 38 years, approximately, there were no Jews circumcised, even though it was a positive commandment, a valid positive commandment. Uh, the, the conception was that medically, it was dangerous to do Mila in the desert of Sinai. It was what the Gemara calls Ruach Tzfonit, uh, a, a, a northern wind. Again, we don't understand exactly what they're talking about, but for us, it's, it, it's not relevant. Under, <coughs> according, <coughs> according to the medical understanding of the Jews, and by the way, they, were, they had a big rebbe, a big poisek at that time, Moshe Rabbeinu. Uh, I don't think there was ever a, a, a greater poisek. Uh, he, he had shoulders, right? He was ordinate. His, he got his rabbinic ordina ordination from God. Um, I, I don't know if any other rabbi got his directly his rabbinical ordination from God. So Moshe, that I think that we all uh, trust his uh, psakim. <laughs> Moshe issued a psaq that for 38 years there won't be Mila in all Am Israel because, uh, for, because of this northern wind, the understanding was that uh, it's dangerous to do Mila. And since it's not Gzeira Samalchus, it's not the Gentiles wanted to uproot the mitzvah, it was an objective medical reason. But that applied to all the people of Israel. That's why it's analogical to COVID, uh, structurally analogical. Uh, and the decision was of uh, Moshe Rabbeinu to postpone the Mila. And we know how Mila was important for Moshe. Moshe all, all, almost died because of Mila, because Tzipora uh, uh, made the Mila and saved Moshe uh, his life because God was upset that he wasn't... Uh, doing Mila or whatever it is. So I'm sure that Moshe understood, even on a personal biographical level, the significance of Mila. And yet still, uh, Moshe issued a psaq, a valid psaq that the Gemara supports, uh, not to do Mila during all their 38 years. And therefore, in the beginning of Joshua, of Sefer Yehoshua, we read about a celebration, a very important event, uh, Yoshua is commanded to, to make a certain knife, knives, and in order to do a massive Mila before entering the land of Israel. Because here I'm just saying a parenthetical remark. There is a very direct link between the covenant of us Jews, uh, the covenant of the land, and the covenant of the Mila. They're linked. Uh, so at any rate, we see here that we have a president. So Let's put it this way. It's very clear, despite the fact that I showed how significant is the mitzvah of Mila, how much meaning it has, despite this fact, it is very clear that it, if it would have been clear cut that there is even a suffolk pikuach nefesh of doing Mila in COVID time, if this, if this medical data would have been validly established, that it's a suffolk pikuach nefesh to do mila during COVID, then I think that the halachic ruling is clear cut that no mila, even for 30, even if COVID chas v'shalom would be 38 years. Needless to say, if we're talking about an era of uh, two years, one year. So lechora, the logic says, Postpone the Mila if there's even, even the slightest risk. Here, I want to remind you something we spoke about two weeks ago. I said that what is the meaning of the word slightest? 
uh, you know, uh, crossing a street on uh, uh, as a regular practice. I'm not talking about COVID time. Just walking to show crossing the street, there is a tiny, tiny, tiny risk that I don't see a certain car or s that is zooming and will run over me. No one will say that you shouldn't risk yourself in order to dive in and show. Therefore, don't cross the street, okay? There is a th certain threshold that one has to pass in order to define a situation as suffolk pikuach nefesh that will override the mila. Question is, is whether our situation with the COVID is in that already passes this threshold. Apparently, the doctor in New York that I told you about thought, yes, the answer is yes. It's much more than crossing the street. What do you mean? Uh, this is, uh, uh, th there is at least the Suffolk Pikuach Nefesh here, and therefore you should postpone the Mila. Let's see uh, uh, further in the sources about the, the fact that when there is a, even a Suffolk Pikuach Nefesh, one should postpone the Mila. Let's read. The Rambam wrote, Ein malin elavlat she'ein bo shum choli. We are doing Mila only to a baby that has no illness, no illness, zero illness. Why? Because sakanat nefashot do chayet akol. Because pikuach nefesh, b'chayvem, overrides every commandment. Ve'efshar l'amul l'achar zman. And also, okay, it is true that there is a special Indian and, and mitzvah to do it punct on the eighth day. Not earlier, of course, and not later. And if it falls on the eighth day, you do it even on Shabbos. However, if there is a pikuach nefesh in the eighth day, then you can definitely push it to a later time. Pikuach nefesh docheakol, and it's possible to do the mila after time. And now the Rambam adds a sentence of his own that the Shulchan Aruch also copied. Yeah, it's all one sentence in Hebrew. You can do the Mila after time, <laughs> but if someone will be lost, that will be irreversible. Meaning the Rambam points out to us that when you pushed away the mil Mila, that is reversible. So you won't do the Mila in the eighth day, but you're still able to do the Mila a week later. But if someone lost his life because of Mila, there is no way to correct it. Okay. Now, I want to share with you so the instructions that the rabbinate gave how to do Mila at Corona time. Because as I told you, I showed you the two sides. The Mila is something that we're really, really reluctant to postpone and, and it's a very important mitzvah. On the other hand, it's very, very clear that when there is a suffix pikuach nefesh, we should postpone it. And even for a long time, like 38 years. So now let's look at the instructions <clears throat> Excuse me, I made a mistake here. Let's look at the instructions of the um, of the uh, that were given to the Moalim. These instructions were written by a very important Jew, uh, Rabbi Professor Avram Steinberg. Yeah, Rabbi Professor Avram Steinberg. He wrote. He got the Pras Israel. He's a big Talmud Chacham and a doctor. He wrote the encyclopedia, medical encyclopedia, medical halachic encyclopedia, Encyclopedia Ilchatit Lerefuah. It's a masterpiece. It was translated to English. And uh, now let's look at what are the instructions that he issued, uh, that he issued in order to do uh, Mila uh, safely at the time of COVID. These instructions came out already back then when I was this guy, you know, uh, Purim uh, Pesach time, but they were here. Let's look. Let's look at it. To all the Moalim, uh, uh, Shalom, 
look at the date here. The date is already July 2020, but that's an update, okay? <clears throat> so let's read the update. At the date of Zion and Nissan, we had, uh, we sent you instructions. Uh, and now, and in Kaftal and Tamuz, we made an update. And here is another update. Okay, we're in the middle of a pandemic. And therefore, there is a need to uh, make instructions for the health of the baby, the Moel, and everyone who uh, attends the bris. There is a, va va a committee, and here I'm giving the instructions. And look at look at instruction number one, which is important. When the baby and his mom are healthy, with no evidence for having COVID or being in touch with such one, meaning bidud, or have no symptoms, meaning if the baby and his mom have no symptoms, have zero symptoms, and are not high of in quarantine, and there is no indication that they have a corona, look at what he says here, and that's already yet. Meaning, first of all, first of all, he says clearly, Rabbi Steinberg says clearly that if there is no indication whatsoever for COVID around, there is no halachic justification to postpone the Mila. It, it, it doesn't enter any uh, it, the, 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 it doesn't enter the zone of Suffolk Pikuach Nefesh at all. Now, let's see what are the instructions. <clears throat> there is an obligation for the Moel to follow all the instructions of Misrada Briud, the, the, the health ministry. Especially, should be very clean, uh, very makbid on, his, on the cleanliness of his hands, uh, of course, all the machshir should be stira, which should be always be makbid. You should wash your mouth with Listerine, which is probably uh, to do with um, to disinfect the, the mouth, to have a mask. And of course, it's recommended that they have a, a, a one-time uh, a, a disposable uh, sino, how do you say sino? <coughs> You know, it's a pot. What? Syringe, is it? You know? Fino. Um, well, what do you wear? Pipette. A pipette. What? A pipette. Okay. Uh, all right. And it should be a disposable one and it should be replaced every bris. Yeah. Of, course, uh, of course, the people who attend the bris, it should be the minimum number only the number that has allowed according to the Ministry of Health that time. So let's say if the bris, and I'll just translate it, it has, it's, this is not specific to bris. If the bris is in a closed space, so now it's allowed 10 people, I believe. Uh, if it's outdoors, then it's 20 people. And it should be a distance of two meters between every participant. Uh, everyone that is approaching the, the, the baby, or anyone else, the kvat or whatever, they should all have the same criteria. They should all be healthy with no symptoms, with no uh, quarantine uh, uh, um, uh, obligation. They should all have masks. They should all wash their hands with uh, alcohol gel and uh, water and, and, and soap. Okay, the mall should have a masaycha, a mask that covers his mouth and, 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 and uh, nose. He should be two meters distance from anyone who is coming in contact before the bris, after bris, including when he gives instructions and answering questions. Okay, now look at six. We got to the biggie. It is obligatory to do the practice of metzitza, sucking. It is obligatory, says Rabbi Steinberg. But with at the time of the corona, you should do it only via a tube. 
Swedish for fairy, a tube. Tube. A tube. Serenium. This, this, Serenium. this instruction says Rabbi Steinberg that the metzitza should not be directly with the mouth. Here I need to explain. For years and years and years and generations, the way the metzitza was done and still is done regularly in a lot, a lot of circles is that the moel is actually with his mouth coming to the place of the wound and is sucking blood and then spits it. Okay. By the way, I'm, I'm, I'm almost positive that that's the way I was uh, circumcised, meaning not a tube, but a, a direct. However, and I'll share it with you later, before COVID even, already for years, there is a big controversy. And some Mohalim and rabbis hold that the sucking should be done via a tube. And others are very against it. When I'm saying a tube, I mean it's a tube that is open from both sides. It's a tube that causes vacuum, meaning it, it's, it, it sits on there strongly, and you suck via the tube. It's okay. the outside of a syringe. What? It's the outside of a syringe. It's the barrel of a syringe is the best thing. Okay. At any rate, there is an enormous controversy about this, whether some some circles hold that it's very important that it will still be done by the mouth. And some circles hold that, no, it's better medically, and therefore that's why that, that is the way it should be via the tube. That is an argument that was before the corona. Comes Rabbi Steinberg and says, no matter what is your opinion generally, at COVID time, the sucking should be done only via a tube. But look at how diplomatic he is. He says, this instruction is valid only to the time of the COVID. Meaning once COVID is over, he doesn't want to tell people do it only via a tube. He's not putting himself in that big machloikas. He is saying, meaning those who are insisting to do it not via a tube, they could go ahead and continue to do it, but after COVID is over. As long as COVID is here, because of the big risk of the saliva of the moel um, causing, uh, uh, transmitting the uh, virus to the baby, uh, you should uh, do it only via a tube, and he says, when you, while doing the, the sucking with the tube, you sh then only then you should take your mask up, do the sucking, and then return it immediately back. Okay, a moel that is uh, uh, having corona, or there is an, a concern that he is uh, has corona, or that he was in touch with a corona, he should definitely not do any bris before he gets uh, the the. Um, uh, the issuer uh, that he is uh, healthy, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, 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 okay, um, a Yoletit, uh, uh, a mother who gave delivery that was diagnosed as having corona, having corona, or there is a suspicion that she has corona, uh, or that she was she's now high of bidud. Uh, and is now nursing the baby or has have a direct link with him, uh, then you should postpone the breed till it's clear that the baby and the mother are healthy because they can cause the moel problems. Um, uh, okay, and he explains, uh, uh, if it turns out that they're healthy, yeah, uh, they have an issue from Israel Abiyut, then you don't have to wait all the seven days after completing the Bidud. If the baby had a, a test on the eighth day and he, and he was found on negative and there is no uh, uh, symptoms, you could uh, do the Mila on 
time. Uh, okay. So I think we got the uh, instructions. We got the spirit of the instructions very, very clear. Okay. And then now uh, what I want to... Um, the, our shear is 10.45 till 12, right? Am I correct? No, it's 10.30 till 11.45. Yeah, got it. Okay, good. So we will focus now on the big debate regarding metzitza, regarding the sucking. We'll explain what it is, why is it done, what is the big controversy about it and the opinions regarding it, medically and halachically, and then, of course, the, as we I, I've started with you from the bottom line, that Rabbi Steinberg gives here instructions. No matter what is your opinion regarding metzitza, only at COVID time I instruct to do it via a tube. After COVID, each one will continue with his own custom. Okay, understanding. Now let's look a little bit about this stage in Mila that is called metzitza, sucking. We know that when you do Mila, you, you, you cut, and then you do what we call priya. You are uh, uh, folding, uh, you're folding the, the, the skin. Yeah, after cutting the mole folds, and then he sucks. Now, where is this sucking came from? So let's read the the Mishnah in Masechet Shabbos, okay? Let's read it. Osin Shabbos. You're doing all the needs, all the needs of Mila are done in Shabbos, even if they require a violation of Shabbos. Yeah, if it's the eighth day. So we are doing all the needs of Mila on Shabbos. We are cutting, we are folding, as I said, Mohalin, Uforin, Umotzetzin. You see, it's Mamash included all the three together. It seems as if it's part of the action. Part of the action of the Mila. I'm not saying now that that's the bottom line. I'm just analyzing with you the text. It's written here. You do all the needs of Mila. You cut, you fold, and you suck, and you put on top of the wound Ispelanit ve kamon. Ispelanit is a certain bandage. Kamon is a certain spice, like a certain powder, whatever it is. Tachlis kamon is a spice, but for us, it's like a powder. So now you could say, you know, Avi Kanai, let's analyze the text. We have your four components that it says that it's the, uh, that are under the title of Tzorche Mila, the needs of Mila, that are done in Shabbos. A, the mila itself. B, the folding of the skin. Three, the sucking. Four, putting the bandage. Now I'm asking you, is putting the bandage, I'll go with the fourth one, is putting the bandage considered part of the maisa mila, part of the action of the mila? Putting the bandage, is that part of the maisa mila? When I will describe to someone, what is the halachic definition of doing mila? Is putting the bandage part of that uh, definition? The answer is clear. Yes. Not everyone together. Is putting a bandage part of the action of, of the definition of an action, conceptual definition of, of a essential definition of the maisa mila, action of mila? No, there's no, here, there's no Biden or Trump. There's a clear-cut answer. No. <clears throat> yes, Paul. Yeah. What? So no. no, it's a flat no. Uh, putting a bandage is an action that I do in order to heal a wound. And of course, of course, it is defined. Look at the Mishnah. Look at the text. The Mishnah says, one is doing on Shabbos all the needs of Mila. You cut, you fold, you suck, and you put a bandage and the powder. It is definitely allowed to do on Shabbos because it's 
part of the needs of Mila, Tzorche Mila. But this is not an integral part of the action of Mila. The action of Mila is the Mila. After there was a Mila, I put a bandage on the wound. So what do I want to illustrate? What is the point I want to illustrate here? Let's analyze the text again, like, like Lamdanim. Okay, not like. All of the people here are Lamdanim. So let's analyze the text. You do all the needs of Milan Chavez. The first example, Mohalin, is that the action of Mila? Of course, yes. That's a flat yes. The, the fourth thing, you put a bandage on it. Is that a part of the Mila? That's a flat no. We have two things, two components in between, the folding and the sucking. So here's the question. Is the folding and the sucking indeed an integral part of the action of Mila? That's part of the definition, the conceptual definition of Mila, or it's just like the bandage, a thing that I do after the Mila, and it's part of the needs of Mila. So here, and is the answer the same both for Priya and for Mitzitza? Maybe Priya is part of the action of Mila. Cutting and folding is part of the definition of the action of Mila, but perhaps sucking is not part of the action of Mila, but rather it's more similar to putting a bandage. Let's see. So the Mishnah says, and the Shulchan Aruch rules it, Allah Chalamaisa, that's the text of the Mishnah, Mal velo para ki ilu lo mal. Yeah, this is a Mishnah, and was ruled Allah Chalamaisa and the Shulchan Aruch. If one did the cutting and didn't do the folding, the para, the priya, by the way, I'm just asking, is there a better translation for the term priya? I'm, I'm, I'm just saying folding the skin after the cutting. Exposing? Yeah. The what? Exposing the... Uh... Could be. Priya. Yeah, I'm Pore. It's like the Froa Se'ar. You know, it's... Uh, un, you're not like unwrapping. Yeah, something like that. So it's folding the skin. I, I, I assume we all understand basically what I'm talking about. I'm not a mo myself. But... The text of the Mishnah and the Shulchan Aruch rules it, Mamash, word by word, rules the Mishnah, the Shulchan Aruch, Halach Lamaise. Mal the lo para ki ilu lo mal. If one made the cutting without the priya, without the folding, it's as if he didn't do circumcision. What do we see from here? That priya is definitely an integral. It's not like putting a bandage. Here, I'll give you the analogy. Would you, would you, could you imagine a text saying, and of course, this text doesn't appear anywhere. If one made a Mila and a Priya, mm -hmm. if one, well, one made a Mila and a, a Priya and a folding, but he didn't put a bandage, it's as if the Mila is not valid? <laughs> Can you imagine such a halacha? It's false. It, of course, if a Moel did a Mila and did a Priya, but didn't put a bandage, I hate this Moel, okay? But the Jew, the baby, is considered mahul. The mila is valid. However, if a moel cut and didn't do priya, this baby is still an arel. He is not considered, this is not a valid mila, halachically. You understand the difference? So we see clearly that in that list of doing all the needs of mila on Shabbos, and it says, Mila, Mohalin, Porin, Motzitzin, Venotnim, Ispelanit. You clearly see that they're not all the four in the same status. If one made it, didn't do Mila, then he, there's no Mila. If one didn't do Priya, there is no Mila. However, if one didn't put a bandage, then uh, he is, uh, the, the, he's still a Jew. He's still a Nimo. He's a Jew anyhow. Now the, 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 the million dollar question is, what is the status of the sucking? 
Is it, do, does it go with the first three? Just like mal velo para ki ilu lo mal, the same mal velo matzatz ki ilu lo mal. Or no, the metzitza is like the bandage. Yeah. What do you say? Like the bandage. What is the basis for your answer? That it's like the bandage? Uh, Aside from fantastic intuition? It's safety. It's uh, because the baby is still the mole if even if the sister was uh, forgotten or not done properly. I think. Okay, okay. Uh, and, any and other and, and Priya means. It, my understanding of Priya is destruction. So they've they've destroyed that bit of skin, the okay. foreskin. So, so that's obviously part of it. And the latter two are clearly extra. Okay. So there is a certain consensus here. Uh, I didn't hear any other opinion. Well, that... well here's one other opinion. What? Please, I'll give another opinion the logic would say that both the 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 mila and the, the sure. deal with the orla are all related to the skin whereas the mitzitza has nothing to do with the skin it's just the blood so there is a somewhat differentiation uh between the two and the mitzitza so yeah. you're actually not saying a different opinion. You're saying a different reason for the same opinion that you, yeah. you will group. That you will group. Uh, 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 so here I'll give you a counter argument. Stam intuitive, intuitively, okay. The bandage is something totally external to the whole thing. However, in all the first three, the cutting, the unwrapping, and the sucking. It's all still has a direct contact, okay, with a, with, a, with a place. However, this is all theoretical. Let's, this, this is all theoretical. Let's see what our sources are saying. The sources, please. Uh, I'm gonna run to the Second. Um, okay, just uh, please turn off the background noises. So the sources, the sources are very clear. The sources, whereas we have such a text, mal velo para ki ilu lo mal, Shulchanar rules it, right? One who didn't do priya, it's as if the, the, the mila is not valid, right? We don't have such a text regarding metzitza. <laughs> there is nowhere ever a halacha, a Mishnah and a halacha that says, mal velo matzatz ki ilu lo mal. We have no such a statement. Mal velo matzatz ki ilu lo mal. Therefore, we understand, as y'all said correctly, that there is a distinction between the first two and the last two. The first two are me'akev in the milah, if one doesn't do it, then Bediyevid, the Mila is not valid. If one didn't cut or he didn't uh, uh, wrap. However, if one didn't suck, the Mila is still valid because no one told us differently regarding Priya. It was said explicitly regarding Priya uh, that if one doesn't do Priya, then the Mila is not valid. Okay. Now, it was said that perhaps the reason for the metzitza is pretty similar to the bandage, meaning a sakana, uh, uh, for medical reasons. So let's see that. First of all, let's see a description of the mila by the Rambam. Keitzad mo'alim. Chotchin et kol ha'ora mechapet ha'atara ad shetitgale kol ha'atara. V'achar kach poroim et takrum arach shelemata min ha'or betziporen. Umachziro lekan lekan. Yeah, you're uh, uh, um, you're you're cutting the 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 skin that is that is covering the pin till it is exposed, and then you should uh, all the 
layer that was under the skin, you should uh, fold it uh, so that the skin of the pin will be shown, exposed. And then he says, after the Priya, you are sucking the Mila. By the way, he doesn't explain how you do it. Mouth, not mouth, but you're sucking the Mila till the blood will get away, get out from all the distant places. Meaning it seems that you should suck hard, like to really uh, how do you say lishov? Pump, uh, um, dwell, yeah, the, the blood from all the distant places. But here it's written why. And here's the important clause. The understanding is that the sucking is to avoid a danger. That is the purpose of it. The Komi Sheinomot says, and anyone who dares not to do the sucking, Mavirinoto, we fire him. Vahar, we don't let him to be a mole. And after he sucks, then you should get, put on it a bandage. Now, the, the basis for the Rambam saying that one who does not mock it on Mitzitza, we are firing him, is the Gemara in Shabbos. Rav Papa says, this uh, Moel that doesn't do a Mitzitza, it's a Sakana. And we, um, and we, uh, um, and we fire him. Now there is a big hakira. Okay. When, okay, here's some history, because I see also the time is running, and but it's okay. I'll share with you the the information orally, and we'll see. The discussion about. First of all, there is a question. What is that sakana that the sages were talking about that the metzitza avoids? They had some medical idea about it, and it's not clear for us. We do know that intuitively, I know that when I get a, a cut, definitely as a kid, that's, a very, that's an instinct. When I get a cut, what do I do many times? I don't think it's only me or I used to do. You're, you're, in order to avoid some pain and others, we're sucking it. And it is true that the saliva has a certain uh, uh, element that, is, uh, uh, that has some medical benefits. I read about it, the, the saliva. And that's why that instinct uh, exists, that when people have cuts, they're sucking. So is that what the Gemara was talking about? I can tell you that Rabbi Dr. Halperin, Mordechai, who is a serious doctor and a serious rabbi, <laughs> he wrote an article uh, about the riddle of the metzitza, and he there claims that the metzitza has a medical benefit. He's, he's strongly uh, claiming it, that it, for what's called hypoxy, there is a certain percentage of babies that after cutting, then the um, Joaquim, uh, the vein, the, the veins, that's the word. Marcel, uh, un unmute yourself. Marcel, unmute yourself. Arteries. 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 Little arteries. They could, they could, they could, there could be a block there. There could be a block there that's called hypoxy. And then the hypoxy means that there won't be enough oxygen Correct. to the end of the pin. And then, and, and when you, right after the procedure, when you suck it, uh, you are uh, uh, minimizing that risk for hypoxy. That's the solution of Rabbi Halperin to uh, the riddle of Metzitza. What happened is that 170 years ago, and for many, many years, uh, doc, uh, 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 starting from 170 years ago by a student, Rabbi Elazar Horvitz, the rabbi of v Vienna, 
who was a student of the Khatam Sefer, they raised up the issue that actually, A, we don't understand what is the medical advantage of the metzitzah. That's against what Rabbi Halperin claims, meaning for years, the, 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 the notion was that it's a riddle of Chazal, but we have no clue what is the medical advantage. That's on the one hand. And on the other hand, we definitely do think that it's not healthy to do metzitzah because the minute that we know more about how to be sterile and you know, in every chirurgical, chirurgical uh, procedure, just imagine a doctor starting to uh, use his mouth directly with a wound. Um, that seems increasing the chances for infection. And indeed, now I'm jumping in the tunnel time uh, uh, in New York. As some of you know, there was a big time debate about this thing, about doctors and everything. And the claim was that there were some cases of babies that passed away because of herpes. And the, the claim was that the herpes was caused because of the metzitzah. And therefore, there was a big demand to stop the metzitzah or at least do it via the tube. Okay. And here, so that is really the topic. The Chsam Soifer, the Chsam Soifer answered the rabbi from Vienna and told him that, and he answered him urgently, like three days after the letter arrived. And he told him, there is no need to do the metzitza with the mouth. If it is dangerous, definitely one should do it with a tube. That was the chsam sefer. The briskers that you all know that were very, very careful with pikuach nefesh, the briskers went even uh, a step, but that's really a minority opinion. They went even a step further. They said, we're, we're willing to give up the metzitza altogether. Okay. Now, and the other camp, which is a very strong camp, says, what do you mean? We're doing the metzitza and we're not doing it with a tube. We're doing it with a mouth like it was done in all generations. So these are really the, if you ask the three opinions. Now, but there is a very important hakira here, a uh, conceptual one that I didn't mention. I went till now, all the discussion went with the flow that Marcel said that it's based on the Gemara and the Rambam, that the whole purpose of the Metzitza is because of avoiding danger. And then, of course, you enter all the big questions. Uh, when there is a contradiction between our medical knowledge and the sage's medical knowledge. So, will I say nature changed? <laughs> As some rabbis try to resolve that conflict here. Nishtanu yeah, the, 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 the nature changed. Or to say, no, the sages only said it as a medical advice, and therefore they themselves would have said today, not do it, only do it via two. Or you say, no, the sages here said that there is a sakana. That's Rabbi Halperin. And the fact that do, you don't know what is the sakana, that doesn't seem, Rabbi Halperin says, even from a medical, uh, from a scientific point of view, if you have ancient sources that something is a sakana, the fact that you didn't find it yet, that doesn't mean that it doesn't exist. So you can't just dismiss here the ruling of the sages. On the other hand, of course, so he also tried to find what is this account. Okay, on the other hand, if clearly it's dangerous, their advice is dangering the baby, you can't ignore that too, halachically. So this is all when we speak about in that framework. However, there was a group of rabbis that claimed that despite the fact that the Gemara and the Rambam present the metzitza as something that is merely done because of sakana, but is not part of the action of Mila, conceptually, 
as I also proved to you from the fact that it doesn't say mal velo matzatz ki ilu lo mal. Okay? One who made a mila without a mitzitza, it's a, the mila is not valid. Some claim, look, it is true that as opposed to the priya, the mitzitza, mal velo matzatz, the mila is still valid. But the abit. However, the chachila, the metzitzah is not done only because of sakana. It's true that that's the explicit reason that is written in the Gemara and in the Rambam. But the metzitzah is actually an integral part of the mila. Therefore, one cannot give it up as a ruling. Okay? Let's see some of the sources, and then we'll wrap up. Yeah. Uh, yeah, look at the Orachaim on the Torah. One has to do three things in the Mila, and that is Mila, Priya, and Metzitza. You see, he lists them all the three at one. He doesn't mention here, and to put a bandage, okay? This is not, this is not mentioned here, and we understand why. Because he sees the, the Metzitza as part of the thing, of the action. Mila is Krita Saorla. Priya is that you split the, 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 the skin to two sides. Yeah, fold it. Metzitza is the infected blood. And you're, you're supposed to suck this thing because to the side, because this is also Bechinas Orla. So you see that the Orachaim clearly understood it's part of the, the action of the Mila. And also in the famous piyut that we all say in Birkas Amazon at the end of the Mila, that's the Rachamanim we had in Berkat Amazon. It's disqualified if he doesn't do all of these three things. Of course, the bandage is not mentioned here. And yet still, Okay, now I'm skipping the, the, the question of the Chsam Soifer and his answer. It's unfortunate. Okay? Uh, but the, the Chsam Soifer is saying, uh, of course, if there's a Sakana, you can definitely do the, the Metzitza, not in the mouth. You could do it in another thing. And it's clearly. Now, by the way, what is the other thing that, he, that we recommended? Not two. The tube is a much later, the tube with the vacuum is a much later invention. Look at that. The Chassam Seifer agreed that instead of sucking with the mouth, one would put a, a sponge and will just suck the, the blood via a sponge. Not really suck, will we'll push and, and try to absorb as much as he can. As Rabash Vai says, you know, I highly doubt that that counts as metzitza. The Rambam says clearly that the metzitza is in order to suck the distant blood, harechokim. So the chsam seifer and all the rest that allowed the sponge, they were even much more lenient. But the tube, the tube is not problematic from that point of view. Now, let's see the one, the student of the chsam seifer was strongly against sucking with the tube. He says, what do you mean? There was never a danger. And the Sefer, my Rebbe, gave the answer only based on a certain case. Wow. The Maram Sheik and the Maria Asad and other rabbis claim that the Metzitza, listen to that, is Halacha Lamosha Misinai. So look at that. We, we said it's because Sakana. They say it's Allah al Moshe Misinai. Rabbi Shirwai says, this is not pshat, with all the respect. The respect is that it's Sakana, and it's not Allah al Moshe Misinai. That is the pshat. I'm almost, and I, I'm almost done. Yeah. As he says, Rob dole achronim, and he quotes here a lot of doilim. 
And he brings a proof from one of the Rishonim that says that Mitzitzah is not a hefsek uh, re regarding bracha. And why? Because it's sorche mila like benching. It says, what do you mean? If it's mamish part of the Maisa mila, of course it's not a hefsek. Okay, we're jumping in our tunnel time. There are all kinds of camps against and not against. Can I ask a question? The most, the most what? I'd like to ask a question. Does metzitzah mean blood has to enter the mouth of the moel? Or is if you use a tube, you just get it into the tube and that's it? Uh, I think, think the tube is, is, uh, is with a vacuum, strong vacuum. I assume it does reach the mouth, but I didn't go into that detail. It doesn't go into the mouth. It, what? You wouldn't want to get into your mouth. You put cotton wool between. Okay. No, it doesn't go into your mouth. That's the last thing you want. All right. All right. Thank you. At any rate, here's the extreme example that Rabbi Herschel Schechter, Tzvi Herschel Schechter, is quoting Rav Solveitchik. That's the most extreme. And one, once a mole wanted to do it, and Rav Solveitchik asked him not to do it. And when the mole begged him to do it, he said that my father wouldn't let you, but I am more tolerant, so I let you <laughs> do the mitzitzah. But that's an extreme opinion. Uh, now, um, I will end just that there is, according to Kabbalah, I don't want to read it inside, according to Kabbalah, the mitzitzah with the mouth is important. Dafka with the mouth, according to Kabbalah. But as the Chassam Seifer says and Rav Osher follows him, uh, we don't rule in this case according to Kabbalah. Uh, Yet still Rav, Rav Osher is leaning to doing with the mouth because he thinks it's not dangerous and most rabbis do it. At any rate, in terms of the Kabbalah, they're saying that there is an Indian with Pe, Mila Begimatria is Pe, and Pe Begimatria is a Lokim, all kinds of secrets. Now, what I told you about post-truth, and that's Mamash the last minute, I read an article by a rabbi in Truman. And the article by the Rav in Truman is strongly saying that one should do it with a tube and not with a mouth. And I'm speaking about an article that was printed prior to COVID time. Because of infection and all of this, because of the danger of herpes, one should do it with a tube. And he's very strong about it. And I read another article of a modern rabbi that is strongly supporting sucking with a mouth. And he says that there is no evidence for danger, no evidence for herpes, no evidence for this. <laughs> so here, that's what I'm telling you, that there is, uh, you have here the camps, Oh, another important thing, it's good that I didn't forget it. We can't deny that there was also an influence here about the battle against the reformed. Against what? The reformed Jewry. Oh. Reformed Jewry attacked the Metzitza, of course. And once they attacked it, made it kosher. Then, of course, the Maram Sheik. And all the, the a lot of rabbis in Europe, they felt that it's a battle, and I must defend the sucking with the mouth. Okay. Now, even nowadays, there was an article in Haaretz that I read in uh, 2012, published in 2012, and he quotes there an important moel that says, "Look, I'm very concerned." about uh, nullifying uh, uh, sucking with the mouth and saying, no, now everybody with a tube. He says, because I know that some of the claims of the, of the people that they're presenting their claims at the, out of, uh, uh, you know, the considerations of the, how do you say, the tovata um, yelad, the goodness, the welfare, the interest, of the child, of the baby. Well, that's a slippery slope. I know that, that what they really want, there are so many 
websites today already uh, uh, with, and not only websites, I know it. I met people that are making propaganda. I'm telling you about Israelis here. They're not a lot, but they're propaganda against Mila. They claim Mila is barbarian, Mila is dangerous, uh, and they want to, they try to uh, convince uh, not to do Mila. And the argument is the Kovata Yela, the, the baby's right and the baby's uh, 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 interest. So he says, it's just a stage. And that's the point. So that's an argument. And now I'll give you the same argument, but on the, on the, uh, on the flip side that I saw. The rabbi in Truman writes, because we're so much attacked about the Mila, so let's do it in order to defend it. Let's do it in the most sterile way. Dafka that will defend us from the attacks. One sees it as a slippery slope because he knows that it's that sometimes, and I think he's right, the people who are arguing against the Mitzitza, some of them are, it's really part of a big argument against the Mila at all. But on the other hand, the other one will say, well, the way is Dafka to do it with the two. So I just presented here the opinion. And as I've shown you what Rabbi Steinberg was preaching for, uh, was instructing for that he didn't want to get into this big halachic political debate. He didn't go into it, but he said in COVID time, but, but he said, this instruction is valid only for COVID time. He added that was one should do it with the tube and this anchaya, this instruction is, is relevant only for COVID time. Time. Okay. <laughs> sure. oh. uh, it was a pleasure <coughs> and uh, have a great job. Is okay. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom. Shabbat shalom.